Hi, I'm Amber of The Little Reeser House where we celebrate the joy found in the little things. I'm currently participating in the Fall 2021 One Room Challenge where I have pledged to complete one single room in my home over the course of eight weeks. If you have never heard of the One Room Challenge, I will leave a link down below so you can learn more and also see what other participants are creating in their own spaces. And if you haven't already seen it, I shared a quick intro video for our own One Room Challenge room, our dining room. You can watch that video for the full context of this makeover, but in short, today I'm going to be tackling one sub-project within our greater One Room Challenge project, and that is creating a beautiful glass display cabinet out of an old china cabinet. I picked up this china cabinet on our local buy and sell for a hundred Canadian dollars and I am going to be using the top portion of it in today's DIY video. Let's get right into it. Like all my furniture flips, let me start by showing you what I'm working with. This is a pretty classic china cabinet unit that is made up of two parts, the base and the glass doored top portion. These pieces separate for moving purposes, so I'm simply going to use the top portion for my flip today and I'll save the bottom for a future DIY. In order to use this top unit, I'm going to need to prop it up off the floor with some legs. I'd like to build a pretty simple base to attach it to that will prop it up about a foot and a half. I'd also like to paint the entire thing in a beautiful warm olive toned paint which fits within my greater dining room design plan. The first thing I did was remove the glass from the doors to set it aside while I worked on the unit. The last thing I wanted was for this glass to break. Next I had to cut down some of the excess wood from the bottom of the unit. This piece was here to act as the top of the bottom portion of the china cabinet, but it doesn't need to jut out this far as a standalone cabinet, so I decided to remove some of the excess. I simply measured it where I wanted to cut it down and used a straight piece of scrap wood and some clamps as a fence to run my circular saw up against to cut it off. Before painting the unit, I decided to build the base that would prop it up off the ground. I based the design of this base on one that the DIY wife shares on her channel. I'll link her video below that explains the full design and shows you how to build your own. But essentially I used four pieces of two by two by two foot poplar to create legs and used my miter saw to trim off some interesting angle details on each foot. Next, I made the actual base using one by four pieces of poplar cut down to size. And all my cuts were based on the specific size of my cabinet. I created the base so it would sit in about a quarter inch from each edge of my cabinet bottom. I fastened the entire thing together using some pocket holes made using a Craig jig. I opted to use poplar for my base because it has very few knots, which makes it ideal for painting. My cabinet unit is also quite light, so I wasn't concerned about the weight. If I was using a heavier cabinet unit, I would definitely go with a harder wood like red oak, but I decided to save a little bit of money by using poplar since I didn't need a really hard material for this cabinet. With the base built, I started prepping the cabinet for paint. With any painted furniture piece, the bulk of the work is in the prep. I gave the entire unit a scuff sand using 220 grit sandpaper and then used a clean damp cloth to wipe off the dust. I realized at this point that I had forgot to clean it first, so I took the time to wipe the unit down with a little bit of Dawn dish soap and warm water. Once the cabinet had dried, I used a little bit of dry deck spackle to fill a few screw holes and the old hardware holes. And once that dried, I sanded it down flush with the surface of the unit. To prime, I used my go-to, Zinsser Bin Shellac Based Primer. I have said it before and I will probably say it again, this primer is smelly and it's hard to clean, but it gives you the best coverage when painting wood furniture. The shellac locks in any wood tannin so you don't get any bleed or staining on your final paint finish. I coated the entire base and cabinet in one coat and allowed it to dry for a couple of days. Because this unit is so large, I opted to brush the edges and then used a roller for any areas that I could so I could ensure a really smooth finish. Once I finished with the primer, there were a few areas that had some cracks between the wood pieces, so I used some paintable caulk to fill those in. Before applying my paint color, I gave the entire primed surface a once over with a 400 grit sandpaper to smooth out any rough brush strokes. I made sure to do this outdoors and wipe down any sanding dust before going at it with the paint. I decided to use this beautiful deep olive green tone called Underground by House and Canvas. 
This is a chalk paint that goes on really smoothly and like the primer, I brushed it into the corners and cracks and then used a roller to apply it to the remaining surfaces. I ended up applying three coats of this color to ensure a really rich full coverage. I allowed the paint to cure for a couple of days and then decided to apply a wax top coat on this piece. Unlike a table surface, this cabinet likely won't get a lot of action that will require excessive wiping, so I decided a wax would be a good option here. I used a wax top coat I already had on hand, the Annie Sloan Chalk Paint Wax in a clear finish, but almost every brand has their own version of this product. I brushed it on in circular motions and then used a lint-free cloth to buff it out and push it into the surface. The finish is really matte, smooth, and silky, but once it fully cures in a couple of weeks, it'll be a really strong and durable finish too. Once everything was dry, I flipped the cabinet over and attached the painted base using my pre-drilled pocket holes. All that was left to wrap this up was add the hardware back on. I added on the magnetic door holders and then took my time humming and hawing over what hardware to use. I had all of these options on hand already, but ultimately decided on a really classic and traditional look with the gold ball knobs. I used these same knobs on our bedside table flip and commented then how I didn't love that they were quite yellow toned, so this time I decided to try buffing them with a little bit of rub and buff in an antique gold finish. You can see the very slight difference between the finish on the left knob versus the right, but this just gave them a little bit more wear and a little bit more of an antique look. Once they dried, I drilled new holes and attached them to the cabinet doors. And before I reveal it to you, let's just remember how this cabinet looked when I started. And let's see it now. I am so thrilled with how this piece turned out. I had most of the supplies on hand already and with only a little bit of lumber and some elbow grease, I was able to completely transform the look and feel of it. I styled it for this video with a few pieces I had on hand, but will likely be restyling it once I pulled together our entire dining room and it takes its final place. It's amazing to see how much of a difference one little shift can already make in our home though. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like it, make sure you like it down below. Just know that every like, comment, share, subscribe, it just goes such a long way in helping us on our YouTube journey. You can follow along with our one room challenge on our blog. We share weekly updates there that covers our progress, or you can subscribe right here on YouTube because we are putting out videos that cover all of the little sub projects within the greater room project. We appreciate you and hope that you remember that the best things in life are often the little things, like repurposing an old piece of furniture into a piece that works perfectly for your space and your budget. Bye friends.